right, here's the hex beam in its uh, vertical position like it would normally be up on top of the tower. Now what I gotta do is I gotta fold it so that it will go that way. Let me go over here and grab a hold of the battery. <laughs> really low tech. This is the first test. Just a couple of clip leads. And let the linear actuator do its thing. Okay, linear actuator is doing this thing. I'll try to get over here. It's a lot of moving around. You'll notice that the uh, shaft is bending up. The linear actuator is turning the hex beam perpendicular to the shaft. It's taken me about three hours to get to this point. I thought there was a short in the linear actuator and I took it apart like 15 times and redid this and redid that. Finally convinced myself it was working, except it was going backwards. Well, I made the mistake of taking a motor apart without scratching the case. If you don't scratch a case, you don't know what you got. And I got the magnets backwards, so I reverse phased the motor. DC motor, DC mag or permanent magnets. Anyway, here comes the hex beam, more or less perpendicular to the shaft. It takes a while, four and a half millimeters per second, they say. <laughs> That's five seconds per inch. And there's the hex beam. Okay, and it should stop right about there. And that little shutter is stopping. Now, we'll go back to our power source here. <clears throat> Oh, and we reverse the polarity on the lift motor, which is over here, and now we should be able to lower the tower. How about that? Okay, a little bouncy bouncy. Okay, now the hex beam should be completely touchable. Here I am over here, and if I climb through the wires, uh, being old is tough. You can see the supports I put in here, and here's the mast. That's where the vertical goes. And this is the uh, feed line for the K4KIO um, antenna assembly. I didn't buy all the antennas possible. So that's that. So now I can lower my hex beam without damage and without trying to stand on a 11 foot high ladder. <sighs> Finally got together. So let's get back to the electronics. It's just a linear actuator, $59.99 on eBay. 1,350 pound capacity. If you don't take it apart and get the magnets in backwards and screw it around with yourself, it'll work. The problem I had that was driving me totally bonkers was I put a connector on it. Everything should be connectorized. And this is the bugger that ate my lunch. I took the wires and there it is. I took the wires and I soldered them together and I insulated them separately with heat shrink. Well, then I was being belts and suspenders proof. I put another piece of RTV or um, heat shrink over the whole thing and shrunk it again. Who would have thought that in between these two pieces of heat shrink, there would be a double puncture and it would short out. And there I was feeding the other end of this cable and having shorts and I couldn't understand it because I knew it couldn't be that connector. Those were double separated insulated. <sighs> and that's what the problem was. Anyway, one of the other side effects in this whole activity was I got this cable here, which is just fantastic. 
Let's see if we can get it to focus. Focus, please. Not sure why it's not happy. But this wire is speaker wire. There it is. It's a 14 gauge speaker wire. It's direct variable. It's even marked with the footage. And it's got an overcoat on it that's just like amazing. I mean, even kryptonite's not gonna bother this stuff. Let me get you a picture of the, uh, the spool. I recommend it for anything that you need to do outside. It's two wires, 14 gauge. It's copper covered aluminum. And it's made up of about like 50 or 60 strands. Very, very flexible. However, the jacket on it is just enormous. Very tough, very strong. Oh, let's get over here to the uh, spool. And uh, other projects here, other toys. Big block. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Okay, this is the company that's on uh, eBay. Speaker wire. Just fantastic. I can't get over it. The, one of the neatest things I've found out in this project. This wire here is just stiff as a corn cob. And it's because the jacket is so heavy and so strong. But it's got just a gazillion strands of copper covered aluminum which solders just beautifully. Anyway, to make it direct variable and all the rest of that, it's got an overcoat on it. And this overcoat is just strong as can be. So if you're looking to run wires outside, two strands, this stuff is just amazing. I bought a spool of it for this project and I also wanted to uh, run better speaker wires to my speakers because um, I've been using telephone wire and that stuff is squirrely and it breaks easily and I'm sure I got a lot of loss but 14 gauge wire is where it's at. Any case, video number two, it all came together after a while. I was sitting here pulling out what few strands of hair I had, taking this thing apart and apart and apart and apart and finally realizing that the problem wasn't in the controller was in the power cable and at that point I had taken the magnets out and turned them around without notice so the safety switches that limit the motor control worked backwards and I couldn't understand how it could work backwards. Sure enough old Woody flipped magnets. In any case there you have it and this thing will tilt up vertically and when it goes up vertically then it extends out 53 feet high. So the hex beam will be 53 feet high. The vertical will start from here and go up for 440. And underneath of this thing, if you can see the shaft, even can read the word beam, the beam's gonna go underneath of here. And of course the whole thing rotates with the rotator. So, after much to do, we got it to work. I thought it was going to be a 30-minute job. That's what you get for thinking sometimes. In any case, it's uh, all come together, and uh, I have my hex beam where I can work on it. That's what I wanted, because I tried working on it a few times, changing coax and whatnot. Being up on an 11-foot ladder, 10-foot ladder, and standing above it was just not good. I'm old, so I needed some help, and I figured, hey, this is a great project. Linear actuator has uh, pins in it, which drop in real nice, so you could take it out. When I had the problem this morning, I just uh, popped the pins out. It took me about 30 seconds, and I just pulled out the pins, and I could work on the whole actuator assembly in the uh, garage <laughs> for hours because I was silly. Have a good day. Enjoy. And this is the uh, battery that I was using little lithium battery to run the linear actuator because it's geared so much it doesn't take a lot of power only five amps and this thing is rated at 3.3 uh, amps and 35 C means that I can get about a hundred amps out of it but we were drawing nothing like that enjoy N4MQ good day